Welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I'm back with my one in, one out sorting the shelves monthly video where I have a reckoning with the books that have come in from publishers and I've bought myself and a gift this month which has really thrown me and then um, I have to make sure that they fit on these shelves but they can't be any like more they can't overflow and so the shelves in this room are my tbr um forever i don't see tbrs as something that's like just the periphery i think of them as forever and, like adventures waiting to happen um and also a sign of the future and all that anyway i talk about more uh, blah, blah, blah. no i don't i talk more about that in a video which i'll link down below where i explain why i have such a big tbr as it were. Um, but I also just wanted to mention before I get on with these books, I am umming and ahhing about having been inspired by um, Gav, Becca and Cody um, and many others to start having a sort of TBR game at the beginning of every month. And I'm thinking about doing something with Uno because you can make Uno you know and also because it was my favorite game as a kid if you've got any suggestions or if you do a tbr game yourself that i'm not aware of please link those in the comments down below anyway right let's get cracking so first up as always publishers because when i um i was gonna say play this game it's a game with mild peril for me i always go through publisher books first because i have separate shelves for publishers and so they're kind of exempt for example all of these are finished copies and i have separate shelves for finished copies of books um if i've got the proof so i can put those on those shelves they're not in this room so technically they don't count and question it it's just my rules i have some of them here these are predominantly proofs although i will say amazingly i have read a couple i've read assembly by natasha brown which you will see in my uh, June wrap up part one and Heartbreak, Heartbreaker, Heartstopper volume four, which you'll see me talk about briefly in a spring and summer uh, book wrap up on Patreon because uh, May was a really higgledy piggledy mixed month of reading for prizes and reading books that are in series and stuff. That's the last time I don't do a monthly, well, I do them bi monthly or fortnightly um, wrap up because I'll be doing more in the future. So these will all go on my uh, proof shelves, as will some of there's loads these but because publishers are very kind but also evil all at once sorry you can't see me here we go there's all of them and um, actually some of these are books that came out in hardback um in a previous year and so therefore in my head count as backlist and that is oh god it's loads all of these so i feel like these need to go on my shelves of backlist books over there. Now, I have read a few of these, I think, or oh, no, just the one. <laughs> that is At Night All Blood Is Black by David Diop, which again, I will be talking about in my June wrap up part one, which will be coming on Sunday, exciting. But the rest of these will have to go on my um, backlist shelves, like I said, with any books that I have bought myself that aren't genres i need to look a way of doing this it's really really like punchy and quick and so that you can get the rules because otherwise it just doesn't make sense to anyone apart from me because they're my shelves and um, but the other ones i've got are all here and um, proofs and um, that can go with these ones onto my 2021 um i'm gonna drop these all over the floor hang on oh there you go oh they're, that's probably a shelf worth actually and um, they're in danger of overflowing last month um but yeah these will all go onto my 2021 shelves so i'm going to pop those there now just to get them out of the way and then i shall return like magic they are over there somewhere that you can't see now i have to say they are um in need of a good sort actually those because I've sort of done something a little bit naughty and what I might do is film that at the end of this later on today because I'm trying to film all of this in my lunch break before I have another meeting. Like I said I've got these waiting that are going to go on the shelves behind me and what will be joining them is actually quite a slight selection of books for me which is unusual because I've bought myself apparently only these in the last month and that doesn't feel quite right but i think it might be true um, and actually shockingly i have read well three and a half of them because i have read andrew um, mcmillan's pandemonium 
I have read uh, Graham Norton's Home Stretch for Book Club, which I had to buy myself an extra copy of because I was on the train down to London uh, the week that I was going to record it with Melanie a couple of days later. And guess what? I'd forgotten to pack, so I had to go and rush and get this from Gaze the Word. Um, and so I might do a giveaway of that at some point. Um, I've read In Our Mad and Furious City by Guy Gunaratna, and I am currently reading Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbard with the lovely Becca of Becca in the Books. I'll link her channel down below. She's one of the ones who has an amazing TBR game, Becca's Bookopoly. Um, so go and head to that. We actually did live sprints last night. Did I mention that earlier? We did live sprints last night, and that was what led me to have a conversation about, oh, I'd quite like to do a TBR game myself. Um, so now then, I need to take, therefore, this feels like an unusual, actually no it doesn't, but it kind of does. Basically, I only have these to shelve and it's normally a lot more varied than this. So maybe this is all working and I'm just being a little bit more responsible with what I buy to a degree. What um, I'm gonna do now is just separate them into any genres because this is non-fiction, Charlie Gladstone's do team. Then we have some crime that goes on a separate shelf. Then we have more non-fiction um, with Derek Jarman's Modern Nature. Although I do have, I don't think I've shown you these before, um, a set of shelves that are just for vintage books with red spine. So I'll show you that later. Um, and then are there any others that need to go on particular shelves? No, all the rest are actually no, that's not my uh, That's crime as well. Poison for teachers. So that needs to go on those shelves. But all the others are fiction. So they're going to have to go on there. I've just spotted where I've told you a dreadful, dreadful lie because I have two books that, I should have explained this earlier, wow, this is going really, really well. The problem with doing something like this monthly is you get really, really rusty at it because this is technically only the fifth one I've done, fifth or sixth one that I've done this year. These two books, I have said all year so far, every single month, I will read them, I will read them. And so I've put them on my book trolley, which has kind of given them a little bit of a reprieve. And actually, they need to go on my shelves because I know in the next couple of weeks, I'm not going to be able to get to these because, well, possibly this one, because next week I'm wanting to read some of the books that I most anticipated in the first half of the year that I haven't got to yet. Um, and then I want to do a week of reading just Caribbean fiction at the end of this month going into next month, because I want to support Read Caribbean Month, but also um, I want to, you know, it's, we shouldn't just read books at certain points, like we shouldn't just read queer books at Pride, we shouldn't just read um, authors of colour when, um, you know, we're celebrating Black History Month and stuff. We should mix this all up all the time. So that's kind of a little point that I'm making with that video. Um, in supporting it, because I think it's great when we have these events that highlight stuff, but it should be part of our reading lives anyway. Um, but that's just me. So I'm going to put these back on that shelves, on the import shelves that I have. Just to say, import shelves are books that I've bought from America or Canada or Australia, not books set there, but books that I bought from there and that have been shipped over because I just like to keep them separate. I don't know why, um, but it just works for me and how I organise things. As you will see when I stop waffling and take you over to the shelves that I have to sort, I think I'm going to, oh, I did have a gift. Sorry. Um, now this is throw me and I don't quite know what to do with this one because Lovely Melanie bought me um, Dara McNulty's Diary of a Young Naturalist because we're going to be doing this for a um, book club going forward. We'll be announcing the next four titles next week um, as part of Independent Bookshop Week. Um, so yeah, we've got that coming up. Um, and so I know I'm going to read it soon. It's a gift, but it isn't for my birthday, so it can't go with the birthday pile of books that I have down there that are exempt. So I think I just have to put it with the um, non-fiction, don't I? So let's do that shelf first. Let's get cracking. Then the left-hand corner and then the shelves down here are my non-fiction. And there isn't actually much space. I can see a tiny gap between a cheesemonger's history of the British Isles. Um, that shelf, I should say, is part of the import books that I mentioned, which we'll sort out next. So now I have to do a bit of reckoning with myself and see which books I'm going to exchange if I need to for the three ones that have just come in. I initially sort of fought myself because the Charlie Gladstone one has had to go there because I like books in size order. Um, so that was that one. I then managed to fit the Dara Minolte on ooh, here by taking away one of the books. And then I was getting really, really tense and I remembered 
I have the um, vintage red spine shell. So I shall put this one over there because I know I've got space on there. See, ta-da, there's actually two shelves of these and some of the books that I've just piled um, below. Uh, but this will fit, if I can do it with one hand. Oh no, I can't apparently. Hang on a second. Oh no, it's all going wrong. Oh, this is what you watch for, isn't it? <laughs> no. Um, other people would do this seamlessly, wouldn't they? Hang on. There we go. With a little bit of help. Derek Jarman is with all the other red spines. Derek Jarman is with the other red spines. And as I mentioned, I did need to take one book off the shelves in order to fit the other two on. And that book was Jane Robbins' The Magnificence Billsbury and The Case of the Brides in the Bath. I've had this on my shelves, I think, over a decade. So before I, I think I bought this in London and then I moved up to London, uh, moved up to London, doing well today, back in 2010. So I've had this go around with me for a long time. I have this habit of seeing amazing looking true crime novels, uh, of true crime novels, what is wrong with me today? I have this habit of seeing amazing true crime books um, and picking them up and getting all excited about them and then not reading them. Um, and so what I have, for those of you who are new to this game, as it were, I'm allowed five books every month that I can put onto my book trolley um, and that within three months I have to try a chapter of and decide whether I'm going to keep it or not. Or was it that I had to within that month do a try a chapter tag? Chag. And they said shag. Sorry. Try a chapter tag. Just do it within a month and then read the book within three months. Have I forgotten my own rules? Let me know in the comments down below because if so I've been an absolutely naughty sausage because I've got a pile of them there and I need to have a reckoning with that so maybe that's going to be some kind of epic try a chapter tag up video at some point. Anyway uh, this has come off the shelves uh, to make space for the other one and I am going to try a chapter of it and see how I get on because I was really excited about it when I bought it but also I think as well since I've read um, The Five by Hallie Rubenhold I'm a little bit more wary of reading books about serial killers um, who have become almost like legends um, when what they've done is kill women which is horrific so yeah but I think the fact that this is possibly written by a woman uh, might mean that it, ha it doesn't come into it with that uh, mindset so yeah anyway there we go I've waffled on and um, so now I showed you the um, imported books and I mentioned that I need to put these two books onto it now I have to say what's really lovely is because doing this since January has made me I guess feel more accountable and more aware of what I have on my shelves I am reading a lot more off the shelves um, which I wasn't before I was just reading the new stuff coming in and it's really exciting because I think it's sort of reminding me of all the stuff that I loved not that reading has changed and that I don't love reading older books anymore but because so much new stuff comes in and lots of you actually a lot of you have been saying, oh, well, it's because you read for work so much. I would say only about 20 to 30 percent of my reading is anything to do with work. And also it comes at sort of there'll be some months where it's much more and some months where there's no work reading at all. I think because I've just got into reading more new books because I know about more of them. It has made me sometimes leave a lot of these books and that shouldn't be the case because I'm not heading to some of my favourite authors back catalogues and all those things. Anyway. You're not here for my waffle, well you probably are a little bit because if you're here you know that that's what I do, um, but you're here to see me uh, have awful trialling times trying to fill all of these books on my shelves. So let's do um, these but I think I've got some space. These are all the imported books and then down there and as you can see, sorry my squeaky floors, there is some space here but it only fits one, so now I have to make a really horrible, hard decision. This might seem like a really odd way of picking a book. There was one that I've had on my shelves for ages, I was like, mm, I don't know how I feel about it, but then I thought, I don't want it to always be a negative trying a chapter tag. It shouldn't be about, oh, I don't really want that one. It should sometimes actually be about pushing authors or books further up my TBR, which sounds filthy. And uh, the book that I've chosen to push further up my TBR is um, Jennifer McMahon's Burn Town. Now, I have so many of Jennifer McMahon's books on my shelves, and it's because I went to um, Books on the Nightstands, uh, Anna Michaels' podcast, which I adored. I wish it was still going. They used to do these booktopias where you would go to a hotel in America, and there would be readers and lots of authors, and they would do sessions with the authors and all sorts. Um, and I flew out to go to um, two of them, actually. I had an amazing time and loved it. Jennifer McMahon was at one of those, and she was so lovely and delightful. I was like, I want to read everything you've written. And 
most of her books are pretty dark, which I really, really like. So this is one of her cri more crimey novels, I guess, um, which I've not headed to. And I bought because I wanted to earn everything by her. I bought this out when I was in America. And uh, so, yeah, I need to read that. And I want to read it and I want to get to it. And uh, that's going to be something that I head to very early in the second half of the year. So that's going on that try a chapter tag. Now, I made a mistake. The Great Godden uh, by Meg Rossoff is actually... Um, uh, oh, now I realised that I made a mistake because um, the uh, Meg Rossoff The Great Garden is actually um, categorised as YA so that needs to go onto those shelves. Here are my YA shelves and as you can see too easy because I've been reading the books that I have on my shelves, not just being a magpie and heading for new. And next up is Crime, which are these shelves here. I can never do that finger thing. I have two books to pop on those. Um, and actually, I have one space. And the only reason that I know that and it's a sort of cheat space is because uh, my mum was here at the weekend, just gone, and she picked four books for me to read in one week early in July. Um, and one of them was a crime book. Um, so yeah, that's why. I have it. In fact, I think that's also why I might have the YA space up there. I know that I can definitely fit one of these on, but I'm going to have to make space elsewhere. And actually, I have a project coming up with crime, which I'll tell you about when I have made that decision. The crime shelves, and you can see a space there, so that's going to be for one of them, but then I'm going to have to pick something else to take off, and it probably won't be from the bottom two shelves because they're hardbacks. So something else from here. That actually turned out to be easier than I was expecting. I think it's also because, and I haven't mentioned this, like I'll go, when I'm kind of going around the room and tidying up and stuff, I will occasionally lock eyes with a couple of books. I'm like, mm, you could possibly be a book that I could give away if I needed to. And this has been the case with this one, which is The Yard by Alex Grecian. This is um, one year on from Jack the Ripper um, about another serial killer. And I think this is what I was saying with the Halle Rubenhold book. It's made me rethink uh, some of the tropes in crime fiction, but also how we perceive famous serial killers and kind of turn them into almost these gothic legends in a way and I feel like this could be in that vein. If you've read this or indeed any of the other ones that I've mentioned that I'm going to learn about do tell me like because this one I think I don't know if I'm even going to try a chapter of it or not I might just I might just get rid of that it's very short it's very big font but yeah I'm a bit ooh, about books now that sort of a Jack the Ripper celebrations almost or copycats because having read that book and reading about the victims in the five and finding out more about the women it's just really changed my perception on that kind of story or um what's the word giving giving fuel to those sort of stories I guess as well and to that sort of historical legacy which is yeah so there we go that's that now I did mention with my crime shelves what well, I am thinking about doing something over the next few well not this month because I want to wrap everything up before the new half of the year you know me and new starts and loving them um any reason for any excuse sorry for a good for a new start or a good start and I will go for it I've got quite a few series on these shelves or like the first second and third at least so what I might do at some point is do a vlog where I just read the first in various series that I've had and decide whether I keep that series and carry on or whether I can just go no and make some more space so that's something I'm thinking of doing in the future now we head to what is always the toughest shelves which are the ones behind me here the backlist shelves which are basically all literary fiction if I could do air quotes with my fingers I would this is the bit that's hardest every month although there are some gaps on there again because like I've mentioned a few times I've been being very good at heading back to books that have been on my shelves or backlist books for a while because yeah this whole thing is working here are those shelves that I mentioned and I won't really be doing anything with the bottom ones because none of the books are that size they're all that size and I do order books by size and I do keep that shelf free uh, just to be smug but at some point the smugness might have to end but there are a few spaces you can see one there there's one somewhere there one up there so yeah this could work all done all full and I still have that one shelf that I am smug about. It was actually harder than I thought it was gonna be, but I noticed a few things. Firstly, 
Lisa Blower, I already have the hardback of this. This is going to be um, one of the uh, finished editions that I keep separate because uh, I tend to prefer to keep paperbacks and hardbacks. There are exceptions, obviously, so don't hold me to that. But there's that one. And then I also thought, actually, um, with When We Cease to Understand the World by uh, Benjamin Labatut. This doesn't sound very me, it's very much about maths and science and all those kind of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a chapter tag of this and if it's not for me I'll give it to my stepdad um, as he will um, definitely enjoy it. So that's one that's going on my uh, potential up to five try a chapter tags of it from this month. Then we have two more and um, we have A Trick I Learned from Dead Men by Kitty Orridge, which I think again has been on my shelves for probably longer than a decade. It's very short, big prose, uh, prose font. Um, so yeah, I feel like that I could add to it. And then I suddenly realised there was another one that I could add to my triad chapter tag, but this takes it to six. And that is another book that I've been meaning to read for ages and haven't got around to. And that's Speak No Evil by... Um, Uzo Dinma Iweya. And um, yeah, I've been wanting to read this for ages. It's about a young um, Nigerian man growing up gay and how that is for him. So when I have these six, I think I'm just going to get rid of the yard full stop. So that is my plan with that. I've had it on my shelves for ages. I haven't read it. Unless one of you suddenly says, oh, Simon, it's the best thing ever. And it isn't going to make you feel like icky because of what you think after reading the five around all those sort of you know, um, making legends of men who murdered women, then let me know. One of the books I spotted was Panty, which I've been meaning to read for ages. It's the first in the Tilted Access a tilted access tilted access press which um publishes only books in translation and i don't read enough translated fiction i was thinking the other day i think it was after i saw um uh, a mate of mine on instagram dan um share he'd got like loads of books no it wasn't dan it was someone else who'd recently bought a load of tilted access press books and i was like i've always meant to read them in order why don't i just get on with it so i'm going to and i'm actually going to try and read this this weekend so it's not even going on my like try chapter tag i'm just going to read it this weekend coming because you know, otherwise I'll just faff around. No time like the present. That's what I'm going to say with that one. And then it's June as I'm recording this, middle of June, um, and July is just around the corner. And I have some planned buddy reads for July. Um, and also it is summer book hibernation, which me and my mum teased that in our latest video, which I'll link down below because we want you to suggest prompts for it. Mum has already come up with a prompt and that was for a book that has a swimming pool on the cover or as part of the book. And I've had this on my shelves recently and I'm denied about it quite a bit. It was sent to me by the um, publishers, Cypher Press, who are a new indie publishing house. Um, and it's set in the 1990s and is a book about being queer, um, but also about swimming. And I thought, oh, that's going to be my book for the swimming pool swimming prompt. It just seemed too good to be true. So I think on my trolley, I'm allowed to have um, an area where I keep buddy read books or books for like a readathon, like in this case, uh, summer book hibernation. And for those who don't know what summer book hibernation is, book hibernations happen every quarter, and it's where myself, my mum, and Tom of Tom Reads Things, who's actually um, taking a uh, season off because he's not really doing social media stuff at the moment we create some prompts we have a group read we have a lovely time you go through your shelves and see what matches the prompts etc the buddy reads that i have lined up though are hopefully me and the lovely um cj reads will be reading america is not the heart by elaine castillo um i got this after having it giving it away and then hearing grace over at gk reads talk about it maybe want to read it so i'm, I'm hoping to see grace next week actually um but yeah this is um, one that we're buddy reading, so that can go on the trolley, as can Actual Age Evie Brown, because myself and Becca are going to be reading this one in July, and I'll be hosting reading sprints on my channel for that. So there we go. I've given myself a new rule. In fact, at some point, I need to write all of the rules down so that I can remember what they all are and try and possibly will them down a little bit, a bit tougher maybe. But that is the plan. So I'm holding myself to reading this over the weekend. Um, these are all going to be books that I try a chapter of. Then we have one that I'm getting rid of. And we have three, oh, I'm sorry, one that's going on at my finished bookshelves. And three that are going on to my trolley and another segment, which is books for, I think I should say books for the next month's 
book buddy reads or this month if there is there so within the next month and um, that seems fair enough to me so there we go i've uh, sort of whittled it down we're pretty crammed so i need to keep carrying on but you know what going to the shelves and seeing there being spaces and being like oh i have i'm getting through these even though i'm filling this place up pretty quickly it's really really great to see so let me know your thoughts on anything and everything in this video um, in terms of books and um i will see you all on sunday for my june wrap up part one looking forward to it i never say looking forward to it. what am i even talking about i hate ending videos so i'm just gonna say bye bye